G'day guys. Got a GPX that's come in for repair. And the interesting uh, thing about this one is uh, it was really um, touchy around the coil connection. And uh, yeah, um, we've just got a big electrical storm that's rolled in with uh, uh, a lot of rain and so forth in about the last five minutes. So if you hear any big booms and bangs, that's uh, lightning. It's very, very close actually. Um, it's been a couple of strikes probably within about the, uh, you know, one and a half mile or three kilometer sort of uh, range. So just be, uh, yeah, mindful if you hear any big booms, that's what it'll be. Um, this one, by the way, yeah, um, every time I don't know if you can hear the rumble there, but uh, yeah, every time we uh, moved this even slightly, even just tapping it, the detector would uh, go off its cruet and uh, start making all sorts of horrible noises and going into uh, like some sort of feedback type um, oscillation and uh, it's very hard to calm it down, turn it off, turn it back on and it would behave. and give you an idea on this where's the thing oh there we are we zoomed in too far but and I put my hand behind this because otherwise it won't focus okay that um, transmit wire was uh, basically hanging by about two threads if you can see that there uh, all the wires had broken off now you gotta remember these have heat shrink um, you know covering it so when you look at it you won't see it so this is um, a classic example of vibration work hardening um, and uh, the wire breaks or just about breaks and just because that can uh, probably making lots and lots of bad connections on the other strands um, it uh, wants to make noise I don't like this wire the strands I don't know how many strands there are I haven't counted it but uh, if you ask me the uh, actual strands of wire are too thick and what I've been replacing uh, this, this wire with which which I believe I run out but I've got something similar and I can show you tell that the window is going to come in in a minute massive uh, um, a lot of rain out there. If you can hear that, gee. Okay, we've got some uh, wire here. Now I was going to strip it, but this isn't the right uh, size. A little bit uh, off, but if you can see that there, the amount of stranding in that, it's very very fine. There's, you know, it could be. <coughs> oh dear me. Uh, 20, 20 or so strands in that roundabout and this stuff here it if it um, it will bend and bend and bend um, back and forth and it's got less chance of breaking it won't uh, uh, fall apart where if I have a look at this one here the uh, this wire I'll probably zoom that out a, out a little bit because otherwise every time I stick my hand there it's a massive big uh, hand sitting there. So I'll trim this one off where it was broken and we'll get it. There we go. But if you can see the stranding on this, Jesus. Yeah, it's just um, thunder. If you see a straining on that, the strands are a lot thicker. They're probably about two or three times as thick. And these have a greater chance of breaking. So that's the original wire that they use for the um, coil socket connector. And the, these are just stiff. They're like bristles. And, you know, if you bend these back and forth a couple of times, they just break. Um, there's there's probably a little bit of work hardening in there too, but it's 
it's just not soft at all. It will break. And there's a the wind again. Uh, that's um, the ground for receive. Um, that that was in better shape, but still it's got a couple of strands sticking there. That's why I just uh, pulled it out of the socket, out of the pin. That's how it came out. But the interesting one was, now you can see here, this violet or purpley colored wire. Okay. Now it's in there with heat shrink tubing. So you'd say, oh yeah, that's all right. But it wasn't the purple one, it must have been this one. I know there's one here, the blue one, sorry. Oops, the blue one just popped out. It's broken off. So the blue one uh, would be for functioning on a double D coil, or um, it also, um, it it's actually that part of its circuit, it's not used in mono, so it wouldn't have made much of a difference, but that could have been like that for a long time. And uh, if you ever put a double D on it, it wouldn't work. Uh, well, actually, let me count count the things. No, actually, no, that's, that is a mono. The blue's a mono, sorry. So, yeah, and that's the double D one. Dear me. Dear me, indeed. So, yeah, on mono, I would have been using um, just one channel. If I remember rightly, parallels it parallels the um, two inputs in mono mode uses one this one in double d mode and uses both in cancel mode so that's that um that just needs uh complete redoing it's uh yeah it's, it's going to be a problem so it needs a good clean up and uh redo maybe even put a new uh coil connector on it see how worn it is yeah it's um it's got minimal gold plating on the pins if i can see down there there's not much left and under the gold there's nickel and uh um some other probably a bit of rhodium and then it goes on to steel and when you wear all that away it makes very very bad connections and it's better to have the gold there um, as there's no tarnishing and uh, when when the gold wears off you really want to um, put a new uh, coil socket on it and also it goes for your coils on any of these detectors you know you just wiggle it a little bit and it'll make noise so just be wary of that so um, that wire there the conductor would work out you got to use um, tin plated by the way don't use um, big thick copper it uh, will cause all sorts of havoc um, use the finest strands you can get your hands on uh, this this wire here is, is basically a silicon wire. It's very, very uh, finely stranded. It's really good for this, actually. And uh, if um, I might have to order some uh, bigger, um, you know, um, what do you want to call it? More strands, thicker um, wire for the uh, transmit because um, the black and uh, the red they carry a, a little bit more current. These are just receive lines. They don't carry much. And we um, want to um, fix it up and uh, alleviate any more um, out in the field problems with the wires breaking. So that's, um, that. that's a short one. I'll leave it at that, but uh, just be aware. Um, what you can do, what I, Jesus. Pretty close to Jesus, anyway. <laughs> uh, take take the uh, um, heat shrink tubing off, and when you stick it all back together, um, don't put heat shrink tubing over it again. Because you'll, if you ever do any work, it's it's a it's a problem that just hides. You don't know what's going on under the heat shrink, and if the strands are all breaking, uh, it's better to see it. If they do come out, and you know break and touch something they shouldn't you know you're not going to use um, a big lot of strands coming out keep that uh, 
insulation on there covering most of the wire. Keep it um, probably short just like that and put it down the uh, pin holes when you when you do it. There's no chance of it coming out and shorting or anything like that. But if you really want to, you can put heat shrink over it. That's uh, up to whoever is working on the detector. But yeah, just be mindful that these things here is, is um, you know, one of the weakest links. The other weakest links are the, these, especially on the power side of it. Um, just be wary of all that stuff. It's copper, it uh, wobbles, it vibrates, it work hardens, then it breaks. So, um, when you travel with your detectors, put them on a big piece of um, foam. You know, foam, spongy foam stuff. So it absorbs all the uh, vibrations. Um, just a, you know, get a big, um, you can buy it uh, in various shops. Um, I don't mean hard foam, I mean that sponge rubber stuff. So when your detector is sitting on top of it, your control boxes, even your coils, uh, vibration is going to eventually make all your uh, cables go hard, go crispy. Right, so even the coils, um, don't let them vibrate. Any copper that just sits there and vibrates will break eventually, and you'll lose performance well before it uh, breaks, and you won't know. So, if you're only getting, um, you know, partial, um, you know, signal back from your coil, or partial signal will transmit pulses to your coil, or if the stranding starts breaking in your coil, it'll still work, but you won't get the current. Uh, and you'll get uh, diminished receive um, signal. So be wary uh, of any movement in copper cables, even the leads, you know, if they sit there and they're wiggling around, they'll work hard and you get any old detector coil, get the lead and try and bend it, you know. It's, um, it's just stiff, it really is. PVC jackets on the outside, a lot of them too goes hard, but it's the copper, it's always the copper on the inside and you know, do it too many times it will break anyway leave it there um, i'm gonna get some work done before we get uh, a lightning strike on the power lines or something and takes everything out anyway catches